Hello and welcome to a Hearts of Iron 4 tutorial for complete beginners, part number 8 we're on today, if I uh, remember correctly. Welcome back, I hope you're doing well. We start the day off on the 20th of August 1936. I uh, decided to put a little bit of music there on the intro, okay? So today we're going to see how much further we can get on with things. If you recall last time, the perhaps the biggest thing that we started was the action down in Spain, the Spanish Civil War. So we're going to select over here on our right hand side to uh, come across uh, to our Spanish volunteers, so to speak, where we have Rommel pushing with two divisions. Now, those of you with a memory that is perhaps a little bit better than mine because I tend to forget stuff, you may recall that one of the things that we were trying to do, if I just pause the music there in the game, one of the things that we were trying to do was get three divisions over into Spain instead of just the two. And if you recall, the limiting factor that decided whether we could get three divisions there or just the two depended entirely on how many divisions we had at home in totality. Now, I realise that some people may think, oh, well, it's, it seems like a lot of effort to try and recruit as many divisions at home as you can just so you can get one extra division out to help somebody else in their civil war. And I get that, but again, to have three tanks over there or three tank divisions over there instead of two is literally going to give us an extra 50% uh, skill, uh, experience points, uh, will help the general. You know, it's gonna, it's basically a win-win across the board. Um, so what we're going to do is, before we unpause, we're going to deselect everybody, and we're going to take a little look at our recruitment menu up here, uh, which is the uh, tank there. And you can see... All of these divisions here, all six of them, are, they're all fully uh, staffed and fully stocked. You know, they've got all the stuff that they need. That's this column here. But you can see the next column along uh, that they are nowhere near ready. Okay, so although we can deploy them and we can force them out. And again, that's representative by this little flag here. Um if you were to try and use these to fight, they're going to take very, very heavy losses. Thankfully, we don't really need them to be able to fight. We just want the six divisions out from training to exist on the field. And by extension, if we take a look up here, if I just hover the tooltip over there, have a look um, under the section of the army okay so we've got uh three thousand uh sorry three hundred and ninety nine thousand we basically got four hundred thousand people in the army all together in the field of which is three hundred and forty two thousand there are another fifty seven thousand men training all of those are these men here in other words these six divisions will total up to that fifty seven thousand so by kicking these out, obviously, they, they go from training to be classed as, quote-unquote, in the field. And that's what we need. And then, hopefully, we'll be able to send that third division across. And if we can, um, I will show you how to get that there. So, make sure you follow along. And again, I will endeavour to say, you know, if I'm just trying to demonstrate something, and I say it all the time, but just to refresh myself as much as anybody else... Uh, I will say, you know, don't follow this little bit because I'm just trying to show something. So do follow this bit. So we're going to select this icon here to deploy them all instantly. And again, if you're saying, oh, well, my flag is greyed out, I can't deploy them instantly. That is more than likely because your green bar here is going to be slightly further to the left. Where you see then training, it says 28% out of 100 I think the minimum is limited. It's either 20 or 25%. I believe it's 25%. In other words, let's just say the training's eight weeks long. Well, 25% of that would be two weeks. So if you've only trained people for five days, it will not let you deploy them, even though you've got enough of everything. You need to have a minimum. And again, I believe it's 25%. So 28% is right on that border. If you haven't yet reached that threshold, 
just unpause your game and give it a day or two. And again, as long as you're doing everything within a few days of what I'm doing in this case, the 20th of August will be fine. If you're on the 20th of December, or worse yet, you're into 1937, like, you know, I keep saying it's going to be very difficult to follow along. So, you know, it's imperative that as best as we can, we stick to the date. So let's deploy these guys. Then we're still paused. There we go. And so now you may have seen it there. These six divisions once again appearing uh, right there at Leipzig. And again, the reason that they appear there is because you see here uh, we've got them training and deploying at Saxon, which uh, if I just click on that to refresh everybody's memory is this state here. If I now select and let's just do it just for the sake of it. If I now select Turingen, which is this state over here, once these guys complete training, uh, rather than them appearing here, they will probably appear, uh, you know, at Weimar or at Effort, somewhere like that, because that is in the middle of uh, Turingen there. And again, it's not like it matters in the grand scheme of things exactly where they are, but again, nearer to the capital where all your supply comes from, that's obviously helpful. Um, the nearer things are to your capital, the fewer trains you see here are needed to bring the supply. Yes, because it's a shorter journey. Um, we'll take a closer look at supply in a future episode, but that's one reason. The other reason I like to think, certainly once war kicks off, is if you're training divisions like this near your capital, let's just say you're deep in the hinterlands of Russia, and all of a sudden... Um, somebody starts attacking you at, at, at home let's say there's a big invasion from the uk and the us although we'll probably endeavor to knock the uk out before we go at russia on this playthrough but but let's just say we didn't and britain starts attacking germany while or or, or the vast majority of our forces are over in russia we of course leave some divisions ha at home to defend the base but let's just say or defend uh, Germany, but let's say those divisions are not enough and they've become overwhelmed. By having however many divisions we have training near the capital, what we can obviously do is kick them out early and give our defensive forces some extra help. And again, they're not going to be the best because they're not the most trained. But again, having six divisions or however many divisions it is obviously we, we would like to think we'll have some tanks and stuff like that training as well to have these additional divisions there to help defend even though they're not trained up to their maximum potential is obviously a lot better than just not having them train at all or having them but they're like training on the other side of the uh, you know where i was going to say the other side of the earth of course uh, <laughs> We wouldn't be there necessarily, but uh, you can see what I'm saying. To have them more or less where you need them is uh, a good idea. Right, let's carry on because uh, I feel like we've done that to death a little bit. All right, so now, of course, back to the point we were saying we've got these additional uh, divisions in the field. We've got an extra man. We've got that extra manpower with nothing selected so again we've pressed escape we're in the f1 menu in other words the army view which is also uh, known as the default uh, view we're going to right select uh, the background over here in spain the, the the side that we are assisting which is of course the darker of the two sort of orangey beigey colors and we're going to select to send volunteers and now look at this now we are able to send three divisions, so all of those shenanigans were worth it. So you can see there, we currently have two divisions over there, uh, this slide here. Uh, but we are now able to send three divisions in total. And again, this is a limit imposed upon by the number of divisions we have at home. This is why in days gone by, and if, you, if you've ever watched older tutorials that are sort of two or three years old or, or thereabouts... Uh, or older you will see players recruited a lot of cavalry divisions just because they were cheap to recruit in order to get the number of divisions up so that once this uh, spanish civil war kicked off they could send upwards of three four even five divisions over just depending how how long into the conflict it was 
And again, I believe that the uh, Paradox uh, basically patched that. Uh, and again, I could maintain it's an exploit. If you're just forcing divisions out and they weren't even equipped, it was just they were just forcing divisions out. Uh, Paradox uh, fixed that. But in any case, we've got three divisions available to us now, even though there are only two there. So what we're going to do, if you recall, let's come back here. Let's click on the German theater. If you remember, it was a while ago now, may have been an episode or more back now. Um, we, before we sent Rommel over, who previously was commanding the three divisions, we broke this one panzer division off and we've just let it sit there without a commander. This division uh, is currently under the name Army 7, even though it doesn't have a commander. So what we want to do now is go to, back to Spain and say... Right here, we want to send you an additional volunteer. Who is it? And rather than looking for the name of a specific general, we're going to look for one that doesn't have a commander by the name of Army 7. And then once that uh, panzer joins the uh, battle over here, we will have our full three divisions, which is what we were aiming for all along. So press escape once more. Right click onto the darker area send volunteers and now we are looking for the additional one here and here we go army seven with no commander we don't see rommel on the list because of course he's already there so this is going to add the new division over there actually says there we go that the division's going to be uh, it's going to take 14 days for the division to get there but that's fine it's just going to upgrade us from two to three it's not going to have any impact on what's already going on. It will just be a huge help after the 14 days and it gets there. So let's press OK. Let's press Escape. And that will, as soon as we unpause, take care of itself. All right. Hope you're doing OK. As, as I record this, it's, uh, it's fast approaching March 2024. Of course, you can tell them, but probably I, I I live in the UK, live in England, and it's been a it's been a it's not been a terribly cold winter, but it's been grey, and you know I'm somebody that that misses the sun when it's uh, it's been cloudy for far too long, and I I just looking forward to where there being a bit more sunlight now. I saw saw the sun earlier for a bit, so anyway, <laughs> that's completely unrelated to what we're doing, right? Next thing then, if you recall, we kicked out these tutorial... Uh, we kicked out the tutorials. We kicked out the division at the beginning of the uh, tutorial today, um, which are these uh, six infantry guys here, or the six infantry divisions, should I say. Um, so we can just click this one at a time, and it's just going to cycle through all of these infantry divisions, of which there are, of course, six. We can also press Shift and click this button, which is what we're going to do. And that's just a quick way to easily select all the divisions that are not yet um, given to a commander or, or all within an army. Now, we could have done this when we very first started playing the game. We could have selected that. The only reason I didn't was because there were... Um, there were three or four panzer divisions. There was at least one motorized division. We had uh, at least a special forces division as well. And rather than just mixing everything together into one melting pot, I wanted to uh, put different divisions in different places. That was the only reason that I could have done it and then pulled those divisions out. But uh, again, I, I, I'm, I feel like I'm just babbling at this point. Uh, so again... Because I know that the, my new divisions are only these six infantry, it's just quickly for me to select that and it'll get them all. I could, of course, just select them this way as well. It, it does exactly the same thing. What I'm going to do now is just assign a general to take care of these divisions and this general can uh, continue uh, training. Uh, so what I'm going to do once again, probably... Uh, give them all to Witzel. I'll tell you what, actually. Yeah, let's just give them all to Witzelbaum. Uh, and, and again, this was the general uh, army number five, apparently, who is this red line here. He's the one we've asked to have the front line between Germany and Poland. So with them all selected, just right-click onto Witzelbaum and there we go. 
press escape and that's fine. In fact, you can see the last lot of divisions that we gave to him are well on the way to becoming the Silver Star. You can see they're, uh, they're about, what's that, 36% on the way through the uh, Corporal. So they're already level 2. Uh, so, yeah, great. Right, let's press escape. Uh, let's have a little look at where we stand with logistics. So we're short on artillery. We're well short on infantry equipment. And we're somewhat short on support equipment as well. If we hover the mouse over the shortage, we actually get a little tooltip down here that says, OK, well, if you continue production with your factory at the rate it's going, it's in this case going to take 24 days to plug that deficit. Uh, infantry equipment, 36 days. Uh, artillery, uh, 27 days. Now, the reason for that is... We just recruited six divisions and we kicked them out early straight away because this is set to infinity. Uh, the Hearts of Iron has decided, right, well, let's recruit the next slot then. And of course, to recruit the next slot, you need people, you need equipment, which includes the weapons, the support equipment and the artillery, because that's what comprises these infantry divisions. And the fact is they're just not ready yet. Uh, so we're going to have to wait a little bit, but that's fine. Um, so with that done, let's go ahead and reselect on the uh, Spanish Volunteers section over here. And we'll carry on here. Just before I do unpause, let's have a look at this little icon here. This is, I think, the first time we've seen it. What looks like a can of fuel that's in flames, which is... Uh, well, that's what it looks like to be, a, a can of fuel in flames. I don't know how else to interpret that, but it actually means, and you'll see this symbol an awful lot when you play this game, you're low on supply. What that means is these tanks, these panzers that are on the front line, are struggling to get their supplies through. Now, we will have to look at this in more detail in the future, but what I do wish to just go over real quickly is that supply is, think of it, I mean, obviously, like fuel and that. Again, ammunition, um, food, that kind of thing, as far as I can tell, is not really simulated in this game. What is simulated is that all your divisions have a continuous connection from the capital and having that connection and a solid connection is how ammunition and food, all of that good stuff gets there. The only thing that is simulated in terms of supply where you could sort of quantify it in any case is this up here and that's fuel. So fuel is simulated in the, oh, to move the tank uses fuel. If the tank's engaged in combat, it uses fuel. If it's sat there doing nothing, it doesn't use fuel. And that is um, something that when it moves, it it deducts fuel from your supply. And again, that's that figure there at the top. When it comes to, well, how many rounds of ammunition do I have? Um, how many how many meals? How, you know, how much food do the soldiers have? All of that sort of stuff. That's the... Again, is not simulated in and of itself. All that is required is that there's a connection from the capital and basically it's taken care of. Um, and so if we take a look at the this here, it says very low supply. And if we come over and look at the two uh, divisions in question, we can see the top one has this sort of yellow notification and the second one has a red one. Um, and so the red is obviously much worse than the yellow. And if we take a look at the tooltip there, the yellow one has 68% supply. The red one is down to just 19%. You can also see right here that these divisions have taken some damage. So this is another great thing that we can look at. And again, it's not like you need to concern yourself on micro to the insane level that I'm breaking this down at it's just to show you in this particular instance that uh, the uh, division that we're looking at here again that's uh, this one here the second one down 
is waiting for nine tanks to be produced. So, as that division's been fighting, and if you recall, I think there were 240 tanks in total, nine of them have been lost. How have they been lost? Well, they've either been destroyed or killed by the enemy, or they've broken down owing to poor reliability, or something to that effect, and they're basically lost. So we're waiting for nine new tanks to be created from home and then delivered to us. So there's two different things there. They need to be at home, ready and waiting, and they need to find a, their way to the front line. Uh, and again, that takes or can take several days uh, to happen. Also waiting for a... Oops, I didn't mean to. Also waiting for... Four trucks to arrive, as well as one piece of uh, support equipment. Now, the overall totality of how much equipment does a division have versus how much equipment is missing, if we take a look at these two graphs or bar charts on the left-hand side, if you remember, we already saw and have gone over what the green bar means. That's how ready the division is to fight, how much organisation it has higher being better the the brown or the or the off red colored chart there is how much equipment the division has so you can see um on the top half of the tooltip how much stuff this has there are loads of tanks you can see there's actually two different vari versions or variants of the tank mostly uh, panzerkampfwagen number 1 but we've got a few panzerkampfwagen number 2s you see you've got various rifles, you've got a couple of carbines, and so you see you've got three destroyer carbines and another version of a destroyer carbine, that's why it doesn't just say four destroyer carbines. And so what that is, is as your tank division has been fighting the enemy, at some point there, your division will have lost a rifle, you know, attrition, and... Having killed an enemy, they'll have found an enemy rifle laying around. They will have picked that rifle up because they were short of one and are now using the enemy rifle as though it's their own. And of course, that happened all the time in real life conflict, uh, not just taking weapons, but entire trucks and tanks and stuff, planes even. They would just repaint with their own uh, livery, their own national thing and carry on using it. So that's the reason there. Now you can see at the top there's, you know, if you add all of that up, there are hundreds of of things that are within the division there, whether you're calling tanks, whether you're calling rifles or other, other pieces of equipment. Altogether, there are hundreds. And if you look at what's missing further down, it's what? You add all of that up, it's like there's 14 things missing. And so... Being just a few bits missing, that explains why if you take a look at the current fighting strength, the very top figure, it says 96%. Because they have almost everything that they need. Now if you're going into battle and you've got 96% of everything you need, your division is, uh, generally speaking, as good as perfect, right? If you have sort of even 80%, that's okay. If your division drops down to less than 70% uh, of stuff, at that point, I would seriously consider stop being so aggressive with that unit because the less equipment that you have, but you're still telling your men to fight, they're going to start and incur more and more losses because they just don't have what they need to pursue the engagement anymore. Um, if we take a look at the other division real quick, I'm not going to focus on it for too long. We can see their fighting strength is down to just 90% versus 96. The reason, so, so you say, well, hang on, how come the 90% is yellow and the 96% is red? And the answer is entirely based on supply. So it's not how much stuff do they have in terms of tanks, in terms of weapons and so on. It's the fuel or the lack thereof of fuel and basically the uh, second division there has less fuel than the first so 
As soon as these two panzers are able to win this engage, should we be able to win, and, I, and I'm hopeful that we can, we will be able to get supply through this harbour, because again, that's where supply comes from, um, it, unless you've got a direct railway connection to your capital, which of course we, we don't at this moment in time. So our supply is currently... Uh, coming from this particular harbour. And again, that's something we'll look at more closely in a little bit. So let's unpause. And we'll keep it on level 3. So if you're not, press plus or minus. So we get to level 3. And let's go. And same as before, we'll keep an eye on the battle. But if any notifications should pop up, we'll deal with those. If you get a notification that I don't, and again, the reasons are going to be, as we've said before, usually that some general has fallen ill or something to that effect, just, you know, just okay it and carry on. So here we go. All right, so let's pause it there. We've got a notification saying they've allowed our volunteer force, which is just as well. So that's that third tank that we just selected. So they're on the way to join the struggle. Fantastic. We've got this icon there. And as soon as those panzers do roll up as a new division, they, they should appear in the same place again over here. We will, of course, assign them to Rommel. Now, if we take a look here, Rommel's got that flashing uh, plus sign again. And if you recall last time, I think we did have a look at it. It was this guerrilla fighter option here. And for the reasons we said that was unsuitable, I'm, I'm not going to go over that again, other than just to sort of quickly remind everybody that's a more defensive infantry kind of option. What I do want to point out, though, if you recall, was the panzer leader trait that we wanted for Rommel. And if you remember last time we looked at this, uh, so if we take, for example, cavalry leader, we can see there that the experience is zero out of a thousand for cavalry, and that makes sense, right? He he is not commanding any divisions with horses, so he's gonna not get any experience with doing that. The Panzer leader uh, option was also zero. He was zero out of whatever it was, seven hundred in this case. But now look, he's up to sixty-five experience out of seven hundred, and that's because. He's been commanding these panzer divisions uh, for however many days this battle's been ongoing. When we unpause, that number's going to continue going up for the entire time Rommel is fighting with those divisions. And as soon as our resupply comes through, that number's going to increase ever more quickly. So let's come out of that and let's carry on. Well, I'm just waiting for that to tick over. I'm going to have a quick look at the logistics. Okay, so this is an this is an interesting moment in time now. I'm just going to hit pause on the 24th of August to go a little more in depth on the whole um, supply issue. So once again, if we select Rommel from down here, and we can see he he continues to have these supply issues with regards to fuel. And again, although fuel is the only thing that is calculated as a as a again it's the only supply that actually drains it that's counted for example we're going to run out of fuel in 3.3 years we can also equate that that also means food it means ammunition it means everything else even though those things are in and of themselves counted but in your mind's eye just think if they've got fuel they've got food they've got ammunition if they don't have fuel, then they don't have food and they don't have ammunition. Even though, and I know I keep saying this, you will not find, well, hang on, where can I see how much food they have? Just just think fuel equals all supply. That's perhaps the best way of saying it. Now, if we take a look at this icon up here, uh, we see that there are there's a horse there, a uh, cavalry. Now, this is how supply is being brought over to Rommel from wherever it comes from. And it's the default setting is what we've left it at is horseback. So what that means is, as Rommel's trying to fight with his panzers over here, the nearest supply base, which in this case is uh, this harbour over here, there's going to be horses. And although we don't see them, it's, it is happening. There are horses going backwards and forwards 
bringing fuel, bringing ammunition, all of that good stuff over to our panzers. Now, as you can see, our panzers do not have enough stuff. That's what this whole notification is about here. That's what this uh, fuel can issue is here. The best way to mitigate that is short of capturing this new harbour is by increasing um, how deliveries are done. Now, the next step up after a horse is to put trucks down, yeah? Because trucks are going to be able to move more stuff more quickly than horseback, providing we have enough trucks to do so. Obviously, if we don't have any trucks, then horses are going to be better than no trucks whatsoever. And if we come over to the logistics menu real quick under trucks, we can see we currently have 811 trucks available spare. Yes, yeah? sat there at home doing nothing. So because Rommel's short on supply, trucks would be a great way to try and improve that because we've got them spare. So we're going to come over here. We're going to click once on this icon where the horse is. And that one horse is replaced by two trucks. So think of this as supply from level one has now been upgraded to level two. And that's why we've got two icons instead of one. Even though that should be obvious anyway, trucks is better than horses. And that's going to be a small improvement. And I don't know, do the updates... Uh, no, it's not instantaneous. So we'd have to unpause and then we would see the amount of... Let's do that actually. Let's unpause. And just see how many trucks we've got there. 811. Now watch what happens. Unpause. Maybe it's next day. Of course, we're building them all the time. Okay, that didn't go quite as I had intended. But take a look because we're building four, you know, we're building four and a half trucks every day. So it wasn't as obvious as I had hoped. Never mind. Now take a look at this. The notification to say we're short on supply has disappeared. Both of these, as the shortage of food, of fuel and all of that good stuff has disappeared. You can see both of these balls have actually improved because it's like, well, we're getting more supply in. But still, because we've still got so much truck... In fact, look at that. The red one has gone to yellow, so that's massively improved. But there is also a motorization level 3... So if we click that once more, and all that that's basically doing is saying, right, well, we're going to put even more trucks on the road so that even more stuff can get through. And this is the highest level. If we was to click that again, it would go back to the uh, horse drawn. And as we know, that horse was no, that, that solitary horse on motorization level one was nowhere near able to get us our stuff. So we're going to click motorization level two, level three. And now... If we unpause, we may even see these shortages uh, disappear altogether. Uh, so let's unpause. Supply status 67%. If you take a look at how much that division has got stored, 37, 38, 39, that was all the way down before. Take a look, stored 66, 65, 66. This one, however, is much improving. 49, 50, that was a division that was really short. Big pause there as we get into September. Just hover over the forces that are in transfer here there to arrive on the 4th of September, so very soon. Just a general bit of housekeeping while we're waiting for this, so we'll just unpause in a sec. We've got the insufficient uh, resources notification again, and again we can just look at the tooltip or click on that. We see we're short on one tungsten, which okay, it's not ideal, but it's far from being a crisis. Uh, steel, we're short on eight pieces of steel. Um, now we could. Remember, if we initiate a trade, we get eight pieces of whatever it is for one factory. So that may be something to consider. But again, I, I'm just thinking that the use of the factory to us is probably more important. And taking a look at the top countries here to trade with, they're all pretty much going to be our enemy. The, the possible, probable exception being Portugal. I think they uh, remain neutral, certainly for a long part of the war. And again, this very minor shortage of chromium. Uh, hopefully we can deal with that, but that's nothing too major. 
I also want to check back at home. So again, if we just press escape to make sure nothing at all is selected, uh, we'll click over on this part here to come back to the German theater. We'll press escape to make sure we, because <laughs> currently we've selected every single uh, division that there is at home. So let's press escape. And we're going to have a quick look at how things are doing with regards to training. So let's come over to F2 menu, which was our Navy. These two uh, submarine flotillas are, of course, were mostly trained. And this is the third flotilla. You can see there's so far two subs. I don't see any point in training that third flotilla until we're nearly, if not entirely, got the full 10 submarines. Now, some of you may, may be wondering, and it's certainly a question that I had when I first started playing. If you have, whether it's a submarine that's gotten up to level 3, whether it's an infantry division or whatever it is, do they lose their experience by just sitting there doing nothing? Now, in real life, you'd think, well, yeah, you know, if they stop practicing, if they don't stay current, the skill level's going to drop off. For whatever reason, that is not the case in this game. If we left that sub doing nothing for the rest of the game, it would it would finish the game being level three. Um, so, you know, that goes the same for infantry and all the rest of it. So don't be thinking, oh, I need to keep people training more or less right up until the day of battle. Otherwise, their skill is going to drop off. It's, it's uh, not the case. But, you know, it shows that you're thinking if you are wondering such things. Coming over to the F3 menu on the air side of things then... And we can see the training there is well underway. It is not yet finished. If we take a look, you may say, well, hang on a minute. It's supposed to be 100 bombers. And there was 100 bombers when training began. Why is there only 94? And the answer is because there have been accidents. Um, so at least six people have crashed during the training. But on top of that, we are actually not able to produce enough bombers to cover the what we're losing during these accidents so what i'm gonna do because we're it looks like we're just gonna lose more and more bombers in the pursuit of trying to get that silver star i'm going to turn the training off and we'll resume the training for that bomber wing once we have increased our bomber production um so there is that okay oh one last little thing that we can do uh for some reason uh reasons unknown you this this here is a transport aircraft um you cannot train transport aircraft in this game. Um, you know, the, as you see there, the training button is greyed out. The only way that transport aircraft gain experience is literally by doing supply runs to uh, units that require them. So what I'm going to do, because they can't train and I use my airport at Berlin for training, I'm just going to move this guy to an airfield by itself here uh, down in southern Germany, perhaps here by uh, Munich. Uh, just so it frees up the space at Berlin for those that are doing the training. All right, pressing escape there. That's going to take place. We've done all the housekeeping. Back to the F1. Back to Spanish volunteers. Let's zoom into the area at hand and unpause. All right, let's uh, pause it there. Our volunteers have arrived. Okay. And because we are focused on the Spanish volunteer theatre of war, we can see we've got Rommel. And now we've got this new portrait here, all this separate division, Army Number 7, with no commander, with that solitary panzer. The easiest way to set, put him into battle with the uh, panzer here selected... We're going to right click onto Rommel. So again, if, if you understand how to do this, you'll be you'll be really getting to grips with how to move divisions between different armies. So again, on this screen now, we've got two armies. Army number one is, well, is actually entitled Army three, but this is our first army that's in this area, commanded by Rommel. This is our second army in the area that's just rolled up, entitled Army seven. And it has no commander uh, commanding it. 
what we're going to do is combine these. So with the second army selected, it's going to select all the divisions within the army, which in this case is just the one panzer division. We're going to right click onto Rommel and that's going to reassign everything. In the, and in this case, everything is just the panzer division to Rommel. And then that's going to give Rommel three. And because that would mean that army seven in this case has nothing left, it will be disbanded, which is obvious, right? Yeah. Once we give that Panzer Division over, there's nothing left with RB7, so it, it disappears. So let's carry that out now with it selected. Right-click onto Rommel. We get the notification to basically say um, that whatever's to do with the other army is going to be lost now because we're giving all the equipment over, and that makes sense. Okay, boom. There we go. Now Rommel controls all three divisions, including the new... Uh, the latest division and that other empty uh, army disappears. So now when we unpause and here we see the new uh, the uh, new division to roll onto the scene there, uh, still at the harbour, Rommel's going to move that up to the front line by himself. So let's unpause and there indeed is the order. So I really hope everybody can now see how the general makes use of all of the divisions that you give him to carry out the orders. And he's actually almost completed the push that we'd asked him to do. And there you see, look how more effective that advances now we've got this new division there. Okay, and he's almost got the harbour. All right. Rommel does not actually have an order now to attack the harbour, so what we're going to do is, with Rommel selected, here's our front line, it already exists, we're going to press the X key. Remember, there's only two keys in this game. Z to draw the front line, we already have the front line, X to attack. So we're going to press X and right-click drag to where we want to go. Well, in this case, we... We've, we've got this area here, that's where we want to go, like that. Let's get this area and then we'll control the harbour. So we're going to click on the order there to activate. Take a look at the green bar underneath Rommel. He's basically 100% convinced that this is going to go his way. There is a minor a penalty for the fact that divisions are still preparing. In other words, we've asked Rommel to do this and it's going to take him a little while to come up with the best plan of action. The fact is, because we've got such overwhelming odds in terms of strength versus the enemy, we don't really need to wait for him to prepare, even though that would result in a more effective attack. To me, it's more important that we just get the attack over and done with. So let's press this green one here. Let's unpause. And as quick as that, we've got it. Just got this last little area here. And so now let's have a look at actually just manually controlling the tanks. I realise we, we had to look at this earlier on, but let's just show that we can do. So I'm going to press escape to deselect everybody. And I've got my three panzer divisions. I've got one here and I've got two, two uh, atop of each other here. What I'm going to do, whoops, what I'm going to do is select the single panzer division. I'm going to right click onto this tile and then shift right click onto the tile where the enemy is. So shift right click there. So that's this guy's order. Now these two panzers that are together, I'm going to select the, uh, the, the first one there. And I'm going to right click again with shift and I'm going to put it onto this tile where the other panzer just was that's moving on now. So I'm going to right click there and then right click onto this, this tile where we're attacking. And then the remaining panzer, we see it there. I'm just going to tell him to go straight towards where that enemy is. And so now what we've done is we've sent three different panzers that we control each going three different directions to attack onto the same place, or, or a pincer attack if you like. Now this is an insane amount of micro to go after one infantry division, but I'm just showing you, if you, if you were really looking uh, how to play this efficiently, to go after such, such, a, such an example, that would be a way 
to do it. So let's unpause. And you can see there that with multiple attacks, if I just pause it there and if we click on that green ball, we currently have two infantry divisions attacking. So those are, our, in this case, our friends, our, our allies, uh, nationalist Spain, I believe it was. And we've got a solitary panzer division of our own there stuck in. Now take a look, there are three divisions in reserve which include our two other panzer divisions. Hopefully they'll get stuck in soon and as soon as they do this battle will be over very quickly. So here you can see the progress of the battle, it's about three quarters done, 71%. So let's unpause. Now we've got four panzers stuck in. Whoops. Okay, let's just okay that. We'll, we'll deal with these notifications in a sec. Uh, the radio's done. Now remember, the radio will allow tanks to literally call each other up into reinforcements. So I would expect this Panzer now to appear in, in that battle even more quickly. You know, because they're going to be able to call him up more quickly now than they were before. So let's unpause. And there he is. He's already there. So... As soon as we saw that radio, it was literally an hour or two later and it already had a positive effect there. You can see now we've got a total of seven divisions. Actually, the bottom three are missing off uh, the screen. We can't see them, but we've got seven divisions uh, stuck into battle and there are just two divisions there defending. They do have a third division in reserve, but I think these guys, I think we've encircled these guys. Uh, so once we win this fight, these guys actually will not have anywhere to retreat to. They will literally be uh, taken out. That is assuming we do have them encircled. And I think, I think we do. There's a very small gap there, I think, which is going to prevent their escape. Let's see how it goes. Let's unpause. And we're getting there. Look at that. And you'll know when you've killed a division versus just making them retreat. And unfortunately, it does look like they're able to retreat. Okay, so you see there, I'm just going to pause it. You see a division doing something like that. They're retreating in a, in a slow, worn out, wounded kind of way. If you see a helmet pop off into the sky, that literally means you've killed the division. You've, you've wiped them out. Okay, so before we come to... I'll tell you what, let, let's just give the order. We'll select Rommel. You see, he's still got a small front line here. I'm actually going to extend the front line. So this is the first time we have modified a front line. So we could delete the front line and redraw it from scratch, but this time we're going to modify it. If you hold down your left Alt key, we're going to use the right mouse button again to click drag, and we're going to do the two together. So hold down your Alt key, right click drag, and if you take a look at this, with Rommel selected, because of course he's the general and his divisions that we want, hold down Alt, and you see we get these two little, I'm going to say it again, two little balls. <laughs> We get these two little circles there at the end of our front line, which is very short at this moment in time. We're going to hold down Alt, and we're going to right-click and drag the circle that we wish to move, and we're going to move it across. So hold Alt, right-click, drag. That happens to be where it snaps into place. That's perfect for me. At that point, I'm going to let go of the right-click. I'm going to let go of Alt. That's going to redraw our front line. And so what we'll do next is give uh, Rommel a new order. So once again, the front line already exists. That's the Z thing taken care of. So X to give the order to attack. And we're going to say X. And we're going to right click drag where we want him to go. And in this case, we're just going to go all the way to the end here. So right click drag. That'll do. That's perfect. And we'll just tell him, you know, no reason to delay get started straight away all right that's that taken care of uh, we'll press escape to make sure we don't upset anything there we'll now take a look at the research that's become available and again 
remember that this green bar here, I don't think I've discussed it yet um, on this tutorial, saves up for up to 30 days. So if we don't choose to research anything, this is every single day that passes, this green bar is going to fill up, fill up, fill up, fill up, fill up until it gets to the end. And that's after 30 days. If we start to research something, and let's say this green bar fills up, it's currently six days, okay? So if we start researching whatever it is, the next level of, let's just say, aircraft or whatever it is. If we, if we pick to research the next level of aircraft, this is going to already dump six days of research into it as though we had started research six days ago and the reason for that is otherwise it would make this game frustrating to play if you had to really micro this where you couldn't waste a single day and if you did you would be behind and so if this says six days if it says three days if it says 15 days whatever that is you have not lost any research if however you wait a full month, so this fills up to 30 days. You can't then say, oh, well, I'll wait 50 days, and then I'll have 50 days worth of research to dump into something. Doesn't work like that. The cap is 30 days. So it's just like a it's just like a bit of grace so that we can play uh, and focus on more important things. And then every few days, if we get this notification, we can take a look and think, right, well, if it's today or tomorrow or next week, it's it's not going to impact how long it takes to research what we want. So let's click on that. And let's have a look what we've got next. So again, we're going over to the industry tab for the reasons that we've said. Uh, expansion there. Another really useful one to get. And the only reason I would suggest doing this is because of our ongoing conflict in Spain. If we come over to our support company... Now that we've got the radio unlocked, if we scroll down to the bottom, we are also now enabled to research this, the signal company. Now, the signal company is dependent upon having radios unlocked first, and we have just unlocked those. Now, what the signal company does, and rather than me going over all of these in just loads of detail, what I'm going to do is instead we'll just focus on them as and when we come round to them, which is in this case, Signal Company. Now, the Signal Company is, is it's a support company, as are all of these, which means we can attach these to any division that we like, whether it's an infantry division, whether it's a panzer division, truck division, special forces, you name it, we can attach it. However, sometimes it's... Well, let's just say every time we attach a support company to a division, it comes with various pros and cons. It is not a case of, oh, well, if we could attach everything to a division, that would make it the best division. Well, you'd think so, right? But not in this game. Because if we attach uh, something, it's going to make parts of the division behave better and parts of the di division behave worse so for example if we put a field hospital in with uh, infantry and i realize it's not showing up all the stats here but if we did it's going to in in the simplest of terms it's going to obviously be able to heal soldiers that are wounded and by extension at the end of the day save some of the lives that would otherwise be lost that's obviously a good thing in exchange, though, the field hospital actually requires trucks to help move sick patients around. It obviously requires its own team of medics and so on and so forth. And so while there is a positive gain to having a field hospital, there's also an expense um, or a trade off at the other end. And there's actually a little more to it than that. But in very simple terms, there are two sides to every coin when it comes to support companies. Now, the signal company allows um whoever you know whichever division they're assigned to it gives them a bit more initiative it gives them a higher chance of getting stuck in when they need reinforcements it basically it basically makes the unit behave more clever now if you've got a panzer division 
and your which is obviously a very aggressive offensive kind of a division for that division to behave clever to get stuck in where it's needed more quickly is a very very good thing to have so absolutely signal company when it comes to panzers is very very good when it comes to defending um, a front line using infantry signal company is much less of a thing and i would advise probably would do more harm than good when it comes to that case so panzers signal company for sure let's get it researched 92 days from this moment in time once that's researched we could also take a look at modifying uh, our, one of our templates to include just that all right as you can see as well at the top there we're 142 uh, political power so we're getting very close to being able to make another governmental decision we could, if we wanted, already modify the officer core, uh, including having a chief of... Do you know what? Let's have a look. Um, Army commands, Navy, Air Force. Um, it would be a really good time to hire... If we come over to chief of army, remember this guy, you know, we went over these last time, but this guy gives dis division attack an additional 10%. So hiring this guy will make the existing panzers that we already have perform 10% better over and above what they already are. And again, all the bonuses stack. So this is great. And of course, we've got enough command power to do this now. We required 20 last time we, we looked at this. We didn't have enough. So let's go ahead and uh, hire him and with it. Of course, the political power, uh, we've, we've lost uh, 100 there to buy that and the command power too. Okay, so... We'll take a look at one or two of the other things on there as well as time rolls around, but let's keep things moving here. And again, once things like this are relatively under control, we're still waiting for things to happen elsewhere. It's not like you have to play fully zoomed in and watch like this all the time. You know, it's sort of okay to zoom out a little bit and speed up time. And again, when something happens, hit that space bar. Now, I am just going to keep a vague eye on what's going on here. So let's go ahead and pause, uh, you know, around early October. And again, this is just to point out what's going on with these two bar charts here so equipment wise in my case and again this is where our games may begin to look slightly differently the top division here and the third division down if you take a look at the equipment wise they're doing pretty well in fact the top one has got 92 percent equipment uh the the third one down is uh, 89 but the second division is down to 76 percent now that's still okay but again, in, in my, the way I like to play, once it drops below 70% at that point, it's, uh, it's maybe worth pulling him off the front line. And again, you can do that manually just by clicking. If we take a look on the left-hand side, organization. And again, it, it, this is, you know, another way of organization. Just think of how tired they are versus how ready to go they are. Um, and you know, I gave the example of running around an assault course previously, which is another way of looking at it. But here we can see the organization on that top uh, panzer is pretty good. But uh, on the other two is, you know, it's still slightly above half, but it's starting to suffer a little bit. So it may be worth at some point telling our general to stop what he's doing and we can hit the stop button. That will allow these guys to rest, and then we can press the go button again. In fact, let's just demonstrate that. So, here we're going to do, we're going to slow down to just two bar speed. I'm going to tell my general to stop. Now, this doesn't delete his orders, it just, you know, stop. But unpause, and now take a look at what's happening with these charts. We'll just click this uh, research, okay. At some point, we'll see these graphs beginning to rise. And again, just because we tell him to stop doesn't instantly refill these. Because people need to rest. That takes time. Supply to come from our capital. That obviously takes time. It's coming through boats. 
And again, if you want to hover over any of these for any more details, you can see how much stuff they're waiting for. I mean, the fact is, uh, this particular division's waiting for 26 tanks over and above anything else. Now, if we could take a look on our logistics menu under light tank, you can see this is perfect. For demonstration purposes, it's perfect. We are 14 tanks short across the board. That's why it's in red. So in other words, for all of our divisions to be kitted out, which includes the three divisions that we have here at Rommel, these three, and I believe we had another Panzer division at home um, under Guderian. I, be I believe we had at least one more there at home. To have them all full... And now it's even worse. Now we're a hundred uh, short. So there's obviously been a lot of losses taken place. And there's only two ways to fix this now. One is we obviously increase our factory production to, you know, more, factory, uh, more factories able to produce more tanks. And they will restock our uh, panzers as and where we can. The second option is... We disband an existing division so that all of those tanks become available to fulfill the rest. Now, I hope that we can avoid having to disband uh, a division because, again, we've got very few. And if we do end up having to disband a division, it is not going to be the three divisions I have over here. I would reluctantly have to disband the division at home. So, so again, those tanks become available. Um, but again, it's something that I wish to avoid if at all possible. But if things get really bad, these divisions, you know, if they get very low strength, they will start taking ever and ever more losses because, you know, they just can't fight well when half of the stuff's missing. So it's a decision we may have to think about. Before we carry on, though, we've got this research... Uh, available here we see there's another one that's just days away from being completed but let's get this one on the go we may as well make use of one of these construction bonuses and so if we come over to the industry tab here despite it being quarter of a year ahead of time still it's going to take us 100 days to do now we haven't really looked too much at dispersed industry i realize i, I briefly said you know the concentrated industry gets you more stuff produced at the end of the day but dispersed industry also comes with a few bonuses beside being somewhat better at dealing with bombs. If you take a look at that, the maximum number of factories in a state plus 20. Now, we've, I think I mentioned that before, but basically once we... If you, uh, if you come over to the construction menu, if you try and build a new factory, we can see here we're limited. So in other words, uh, let's take Franken here. We can only put seven factories in Franken. There are two currently and there are seven. Now you may say, well, what limits how many factories you could have in a state? And the answer is it generally depends how many people live in a certain area, how big the cities are. Uh, that's sort of the rule. So you'll find some areas uh, where you can build far fewer. Um, so there are just four factories that can be put up there. Um, when you go to certain places abroad, uh, in the middle of nowhere, like literally up in places like the Siberian sort of areas, you may find you can only build one factory. In some places, you can't build any at all. Some places will literally be zero. So those are completely isolated areas where nobody lives. But... By unlocking this particular thing, whatever that number happens to be, we can increase by 20%. So that's obviously a good thing. Being able to build more factories means building more factories means more stuff. Production efficiency, retention and base. Remember, the production efficiency is factories building the same thing over and over again. Get good at it, which means at the end of the week... The same factory produces more guns than another factory that's only just started doing that. And what's even better about their production efficiency is they don't use any more materials in doing it. So a factory that's really good at producing guns, let's say, let's just say it produces 200 weapons at the end of the week and it uses two tons of steel to do it. A factory that's not very good will still use two tons of steel 
but may only produce half as many guns. So that's obviously a really important thing. So uh, increasing the efficiency base means the factories are starting off uh, having a, a basically they're better off to begin with right at the start. And then efficiency retention is sometimes if you have to swap factories from doing this to that, um, well, certainly when it comes to up, say for example, you're producing a uh, earlier version of an aircraft and now you're going to upgrade to a newer version of the aircraft, uh, the factory is going to better hold on to some of that experience um, versus having a brand new factory. So that's important as well. And again, the others are factory output plus 10%. That's good. Dockyard, if, if we're on the coast, plus 10%. That's good. And again, the uh, bomb vulnerability. So this is a very important one to get. Now, another one that I'm strongly considering is this one over here. Fuel refining. And the only reason for that is if you take a look at how long it's going to research, this is the longest of them all, 136 days. If we take a look at the rubber here, this is just 74 days. Same with the oil. Um, this one obviously is somewhere in the middle at 100 days. This one is also a much quicker one at 78. So if you've got 100% bonus, which again I maintain is 50% really, if you can get 50% off something, and if, whether it's something in the shop or whatever, it makes sense to use that 50% off coupon on a big ticket item versus, say, a pack of chewing gum. Uh, so what I'm probably going to do is go after the fuel refining level 2 just because I'm going to be saving a lot of, uh, a lot of days in doing just that. So let's go for that, but I absolutely want the dispersed industry. And again... It's going to be a small penalty because we're doing this, uh, you know, like say about three months ahead of time. Quarter of a year. So let's get that one done. Okay. And let's press escape. And uh, let's see how the battle is going. So let's unpause. Going to select out here. So to make sure we've got Rommel selected again. Okay. Now this is a bug, a glitch that's been ongoing in Hearts of Iron for years. Uh, people talk about it all the time in the forums. I've no idea why it's such an issue. If you take a look next to F uh, Rommel, uh, the portrait next to him appears to be blank like there's nobody there. Yet we know full well we hired a field marshal. But if we actually click on that blank portrait, we do actually see in the top left corner there is indeed uh, Field Marshal Gunter von Kluger running the show. This is a visual glitch. A bug and is not that oh where's my field marshal gone he's disappeared it's a visual bug um, it would be really nice if paradox would be able to fix that bug because as we say it's been ongoing for years anyway let's hit escape let's unpause and I think as we wind towards the end of this episode which uh, you know we've made a lot of progress through northern Spain but we've also learnt a lot of technicalities and once again to, I'm just going to click this here to select my division there in Spain. Let's press plus to increase the speed and I think what we'll do is we'll aim to finish the episode on or around the end of October. So I've just paused it as you always should when you get a notification like this. Hit OK. Okay, so we've got a national focus completed as well as some more research. Mechanical computing. Okay, this is great. Of course, remember, this speeds up the research speed. Okay, so absolutely before we unpause, we'll want to set some new national focus going. Uh, so with Rhineland complete and over to the left. Again, we're going down the side here until we can get the research slot. So the next one, having just gone this one here, is the uh, KDF wagon, or wagon, I guess they would say. And again, two, four, six building slots, two, four, six factories across three states, which is great. Now, you may think, oh, well, Hessen's already full. You know, it could have, I don't know, nine factories, and we've already got nine. 
That's why this bonus is so good, because it adds two building slots before it gives you the factories. So if you are limited to nine, it will increase it to 11, and then it will uh, put those two factories in. So that's great. So let's select that. 70 days, and we're well on the way there. Research slot, we've got that to plug. So let's come down to the uh, third one there. And take another look on industry. Now you can see we've made use of all the bonuses that applied universally across the board. We do, however, have another 100% uh, bonus that is available to us for excavation. There is no reason not to use this bonus right now. There's nothing else we can spend it on. There is no penalty for it being ahead of time because it's 1936 uh, technology, which is where we are. It's going to take us 85 days to do it. And once it's done, we'll get an extra 10% out the ground across the board, whether it's steel, whether it's oil, uh, aluminium, tungsten, you name it. We're going to get an extra 10%. So let's go and get that. All right. Let's unpause. Uh, let's do away with the research. Let's select Rommel and look at this. I don't know exactly how long we had him sat there doing nothing, but it's been at least uh, several days. His, his graphs there on the left are more or less back up to full. His organization is 100%. In other words, the troops are rested. They're raring to go. If you take a look at equipment-wise, it's as full as it's ever going to be. And again, with the main shortage being the uh, light tanks, we're waiting for them to be produced and get there. There's also a few artillery pieces missing, but if we take a look, they're 92% ready. Uh, they're 92% and the other one is 97%. Um, I don't want to get too complicated, but I will say that the fighting strength is always rounded down to the nearest 10%. In other words, an infantry division or, or uh, any division, whether it's infantry, panzer, whatever... If it says 97% strength or 92% strength, either way, they're going to get rounded down to the nearest 10%. So even if you have something that's 99.9% .9 ready to go, it's still going to round it down to being 90% ready to go. So said another way, there is no difference between something that's 97% and 92%. In, for, in, in terms of how well they fight on the field, it's exactly the same. The only difference being, those that are 92% uh, equipped are far more likely to dip below 90, as in that they'll get to 89% probably much quicker than the group that's up to 97%. Once they dip from 90% down to 89, that then gets rounded down to 80% fighting strength. And that's obviously a big difference from 80 to 90. This is why once you dip below 70% and you're on 69, you behave as though you're 60%. You, you, you're not doing much better than half strength at that point. And that's when you're probably doing more harm than good by keep fighting. And it's best that you... Do what we did there, you stop the division from fighting so it has chance to recuperate and so on. So let's tell Rommel to uh, get going and let's unpause. And one other thing that we've not yet looked at yet, and this would be a nice opportunity, is this icon here, which is how aggressive Rommel will be when he fights. Now again, generally speaking, we want this battle in Spain to drag on for as long as we can. Uh, to get as much experience as we can. But for the reasons we've said before, it would be helpful to just tidy this bit up at the top uh, sooner rather than later. So if we click on these uh, double arrows here, we've got a choice between being super careful on the left with the single arrow or super aggressive on the right where you've got those three arrows. Now, generally speaking, if you go everywhere super aggressive, you will lose lots of soldiers in the process. Because, again, it's like, sod being careful. Don't sit there waiting to see that it's clear before you go. Just go. Um, I find that playing on the single arrow, the general can often be so cautious. He doesn't even bring his divisions into position for fear of what might happen. So... 
unless you are basically playing in a way where you're almost paused, I would avoid using the single arrow. The balanced mana or the aggressive mode are the two ways where you'll see most players playing. It just depends on how big the war is that they're currently working on. In this case, if this was the only part of the battle that we had, I don't see any reason why not to go super aggressive just to get it over and done with. If, however, it's like a massive area like Russia, there is no way you can go super aggressive through Russia. You will lose far too many people and then probably end up losing altogether. So let's just up this to level 3 for now, and that will make Rommel go more aggressive. We must remember, though, to turn that back before we continue on down here. So let's unpause. And you can see now straight away these balls going green as Rommel gets his rested units into battle and does so with full aggression and making nice progress there. Now he's decided to make a play straight for the harbour, which is interesting. It may make more sense to actually go for this tile here, but let's just stick with what Rommel's doing. We can already see that first division, the organisation is starting to fall a bit as they're getting tired. We can, of course, click on the ball there to see what's happening. It's actually committed only two divisions into this fight, which means the third panzer division... Oh, there it is. The third panzer division is actually fighting over here. And it does not appear, so I'm going to pause it here. So in my case, and again, if your game is varying a little bit, it doesn't matter in the grand scheme of things. All that matters is that we don't engage this second area until we're sort of together uh, doing that. So because my guys here um, are struggling to win this fight with the default orders that Rommel is giving them, I may decide, you know, I'm going to select uh, a separate order. So what I'm going to do is just going to get rid of that screen just so I can see what I'm doing. I'm going to press escape so I don't select the wrong unit. Now we've got one Panzer Division over here who's already trying to fight for this tile. But the other Panzer Divisions, these two, as we've ascertained, are trying to fight for the harbour. Now for the reasons we've seen, it appears that they're struggling to do so. So what I'm going to do is assign these two Panzer Divisions to manually go after this tile here, where you see these infantry are currently fighting. So let's do that. Not with all three divisions selected, just these two that are fighting for the harbour. So I'm just going to right click over here. I'm now going to unpause. And now Rommel's going to assist this division here in fighting for this tile. And you can see that this is looking much more effective. In fact, the enemy's already started panicking and is trying to withdraw some of his divisions there. And this is, uh, this is looking much more successful than was the fight over at the harbour. Actually, this is interesting. The enemy's actually broken out, which uh, is not necessarily a good thing for the enemy because it means that... There we go. Let's pause. We've broken through. Look at this. We've actually encircled some enemy divisions here. And we've got to be careful when you're encircling the enemy that they don't encircle you. And again, there's a chance that, or oh, it's likely that your game will not have done exactly what mine's just done here. If that's the case, don't worry about it. Just keep, just let Rommel carry on doing what he's doing. It's just, again, there's a small degree of randomness when things happen. So what I'm going to do now with Rommel, I'm actually going to delete the orders. And again, unless exactly what's just happened on your game, just let Rommel carry on doing what he's doing. I'm going to delete all my orders from Rommel, and this is what I would suggest you do if this would happen to you. Right click on those orders, okay, to delete them. We're now going to, with Rommel selected, press the Z key to draw a new front line, and I'm just going to select this area here. So I'm going to right click and drag, uh, not that way around, there we go, something like this. 
And I'm now going to tell my panzers to just basically work their way towards the left and the south. So maybe somewhere like that. Because these enemies are surrounded, it makes them much easier to kill. And there are at least three enemy divisions. We see there's three enemy divisions there. There's an unknown quantity over there. We see there's a question mark. So we've got at least four enemy divisions encircled here, which makes them easier to kill. So order's given. Let's tell Rommel to go. Let's slow time down to two bars and on buzz. see there is a there's actually five enemy divisions here now so there are a lot of encircled enemy divisions now if the enemy happens to link back up again to the to their other divisions here which importantly have the link to the harbor then our endeavors to try and kill these divisions that have been cut off is obviously for naught but we're gonna try um and again to have Rommel go max aggressive here is, of course, uh, important in that regard. So he's uh, bringing divisions into position. And we've actually been able, or, or maybe the AI has actually done it. Look at this. They've uh, broken the encirclement in half. So this division here has had it. He, that enemy division there is dead. And that's going to enable us to focus entirely... this here a little bit of micro doesn't hurt let's click on the ball to see what's happening so so far if i just uh, pause it there all of our three panzer divisions are engaged in the conflict we've got a reserve from one of the allies infantry ready to get stuck in and we're up against four enemy divisions with a fifth in reserve but they are encircled Providing the enemy is not able to hook up, we do appear to have a couple of friendly divisions just stood there. Hopefully they will prevent uh, these guys here from hooking up. And providing they can't hook up, these guys that we've got encircled are going to get weaker and weaker and weaker as they burn through their supplies. Take a look, we're also, uh, a couple of divisions are starting to get tired. If you look, the, the green bar is really starting to fail and we're losing a bit of equipment as well but in this instance it's more important that we keep the pressure on because again I mean, there's five divisions man that's uh, that's a lot of enemy we'll pick up pace uh, to level three and once again keep an eye on this uh, argument uh, argument <laughs> battle All right, let's pause. So although they're encircled, they're not um, dissipate. Uh, we're not taking them out quite as quickly as I'd have hoped. We've got four divisions stuck in. There are two in reserve. Uh, this is all to do with how many, um, you know, how long it's taken our allies to get called up. And you can see, even though there are two divisions ready to go, the lack of our allies having radios and um, support companies is what's delaying their ability to get stuck in. Um, so you can see why, again, when it comes to attack, panzers are really good for more than just the obvious going after people with guns behind a thick layer of steel. Uh, so we'll come back to this in a sec, just before we wrap this episode up, because it's already been quite long. I'm going to come over to the research before we forget about this, uh, get that underway. Now take a look at this. We've got another 100% research bonus, and we're able to use it uh, for excavation too. Now it's not that I don't want to do this. We see it's another, I don't know, a month or two ahead of time, 0.14 years. That 100% research bonus will still be there in a couple of months time. In fact, if you take a look at the date, we're on the 9th of November. This technology is probably going to become unlocked on the 1st of January 1937. 
so I may as well take advantage of the bonus at that time and there'll be zero penalty on how long it takes me to research it and I realize the penalty is small at 0 0.14 years but it may I don't know 10 days or whatever I may as well save those 10 days and research something else so let's come across to the artillery screen this is one that we've not uh, begun yet and if we take a look at the uh, option to research here for the interwar artillery it's going to take us 97 days look at all those bonuses we get uh, su support artillery soft attack plus 10 uh, artillery support attack plus 10 motorized plus 10 uh, on and on and on um, the one that I'm interested in at least with regards to the engagement here in Spain uh, I think uh, let's just have a quick look if we come over to the uh, Panzer Division and yes indeed if we take a look at the Panzer Division support company here we are using artillery so if we research this item here the interwar artillery the amount of damage that support company is able to put out is going to increase by 10 percent which is obviously very helpful because our panzers or at least the light panzers are primarily pursuing uh, enemy troops so let's go ahead and unlock that one um, 97 days okay and then last but not least, we've got uh, another option to modify the government. Now, one of the things we haven't looked at yet is the military high command. So if I just make myself disappear, we've been over the fact here we've got uh, the head of the army, head of the navy, head of the air force. Those we have discussed. But next along... We've got the military high commands, and there are three options for this, which incidentally are the same as these three here. So they're just two different ways to get at the same thing, but let's just look at it on this screen. If we select one of these military advisors, and again, it's the same as before with the governmental advisors, we've got three slots to pick any combination of these guys in here. And again, exactly who you have is going to vary depending on which country you play, which DLC. And sometimes even at what stage of the war, uh, you, sometimes you gain people and lose people. Again, as per the narrative. Now, because we can have three people at some point, we absolutely want to get Rommel in. Now, take a look at what he does. He will give all of our armoured divisions an additional 15% attack as well as 15% defence. So you can start and see this tutorial. How many times have we said, oh, this is an extra 5% this, an extra 10% that, and it's stacking and stacking and stacking. And this is one of the reasons why when we go into, or when we will be going into Russia, this is why we'll be uh, doing very well, at least in the early stages. Because although in terms of manpower, we've got less, in terms of... How well our divisions behave, the efficiency, the leadership, or you know, the technology, all of that sort of stuff. Basically, all the advantages are on, on our side. Now, the one here that I find uh, super useful, and unfortunately, see there, we've got 19 commands power and we require 20 for this decision. So we'll unpause until we get that, is Army Logistics. What does that mean? Division attrition is 8% less. And remember, attrition, and the only reason I'm talking about this, especially for some of you where English isn't your first language, attrition being stuff that, think of it as broken down, has lost, has just worn out, all that kind of stuff. Um, now, that includes your hand weapons, but it also includes tanks, anything that the uh, that your infantry is going to be using or your or your ground divisions. So if we lose 8% less stuff, and if we come over to the logistics menu, when we're talking thousands potentially of tanks, thousands of guns, artilleries, trucks, or all, all, all of it, to lose 8% less is many, many hundreds, if not thousands, by the end of the game. Uh, so to hire somebody like that, especially if you've got a shortage or you're going to be anticipating a shortage, and trust me, going into Russia, we're going to be anticipating a shortage. 
to get this guy hired ahead of time, absolutely essential. Now, again, we need 20 command power to do it. So I'm just going to hit escape. I'm going to unpause briefly until we see that number next to the telephone go 20. You do the same if you're copying along. We've also got this little battle ongoing, but there we go. We've got 20 command power. I don't know if you noticed that hat just popped off there. We'll take a closer look at that, but modify government, add high command, and here we go. Uh, Werner von Fritsch. <laughs> Army logistic, 8% in our favor. Okay. Right. Remember what I was saying? When an enemy loses, they sort of, you know, they walk backwards looking a little bit disheveled as a retreat. But when they die, the, the, the hat just pops off into the sky. Now, again, the difference between retreating and dying is, do I have anywhere to retreat back to? Or if I've been encircled and I can't retreat, then they die. So take a look at this division here. There's, we've got four divisions encircled. See that hat pop off. Now there are three. And that's because as they're losing, they've got nowhere to fall back to. All of this is country, uh, you know, in our hands. Or in our uh, allies' hands. I keep saying allies, even though, you know, I think we know what we mean. And you can see there as well, they've got that uh, fuel shortage or, you know, they've got that shortage of supplies. You can see there are warnings there that they're being affected by attrition, which is obvious. You know, we've got them surrounded. They haven't had any supplies for days. They're going to be running out of everything. Uh, so basically, these guys, the only way that they're not going to die is if their pals manage to break out from the harbour and hook up with them. Uh, let's get Rommel. Okay, so we saw something there to do with Italy and Ethiopia. We'll just click that out the way. You know, we're not really interested in what they're doing at this moment in time. All I'm interested in is this battle here. So I'm actually going to just hit escape. I'm just going to draw over the whole area, which is going to select all of my divisions, all three of them. And I'm just going to right click onto this tile because I can see this division over here actually got caught up dealing with that other enemy. And now again, let's look at this battle, how quickly it's going to unfold. Because there are four divisions attacking. We've got two more in reserve. The enemy still has three divisions. Now down to two. We saw another hat popping off there. That's going to go quicker and quicker. And as soon as that's over, we're going to call it for today. And again, if you've only been able to watch this bit because the same thing didn't happen to you, don't worry too much about it. Just let Rommel keep doing what he's doing down here. Speed up the time. And by the way, don't worry, we're not going to micro to the insane level that we've been doing on the other part of Spain. We, we just let it go by itself. The only reason I wanted to show you this amount of micro up here is to show you uh, the difference between letting the AI, as in Rommel, do what he thinks is best versus when he does something that's questionable and we make a decision, you know, that overrides what he does, right? I tell you what, man, they're holding very well considering they haven't had supplies for as long as they have, but they're down to just one division now. And they've got eight divisions attacking them. And you can see they're lasting that long. Not long at all. Okay, so Rommel having completed what his order was there, which was to deal with that encirclement, suddenly finds himself without any orders. And that's because the front line, which was the encirclement, obviously as he kills them, completely disappears. When there is no more encirclement, because we've taken them out, the front line vanishes. So we have to manually assign him another front line, which is over here. So if you're probably at this stage of the game still not finished off northern Spain, uh, just uh, allow Rommel to finish that off. And again, I'm just going to right click and drag a front line there using Z. Press X, draw a front line. I'm going to downgrade his aggression from maximum to the regular modes. And I'm just going to tell him to go. Okay, we'll hit uh, spacebar, that can continue. 
And here we are on the 8th. On the 9th, let's go to the 14th of December. And then what we'll do is we'll call it quits for what has been a very lengthy episode 8, but there's been a lot in there. There's the 14th. Let's pause it there. I hope you found it uh, helpful. It's like we're 99% on the way to capturing that uh, harbour. What a great way that will be to start the next episode. So until then, wherever in the world you may be, good morning, good afternoon, good evening, and good night. Take care. Bye-bye.